The entire Fallout franchise on the Steam Deck OLED, we already tested the LCD and the ROG Ally, so all the way from Fallout 1 to Fallout 76, so Fallout 1, 2, 3, 4, Tactics, New Vegas, uh, and 76. So let's get started right away and see if there is anything to do before launching them. We start with the first Fallout. I recommend you using the trackpad, go into the options and select scaling 2x, otherwise the UI is super small. So in my opinion, it's impossible to use. So scale into X, hit done. So the first thing you're going to notice is that the game feels pretty laggy when moving the mouse. Well, in order to fix that, hit the three dots, scroll down and disable the frame limit. But the frame rate, it will say like it's 500 FPS. Well, that's not true. It's just a bug with the game scope, I guess. They don't really feel good without a trackpad because again, they were designed with mouse around them. So this one is completely fine. It will give you, let's see how much battery. Yeah, probably a ridiculous amount of battery, probably over five hours. We're using four watts, <laughs> at least a little bit more, maybe. So yeah, let's let's call it almost unlimited battery. Probably like over six hours of battery, I would say, being generous. So yeah, enough of this one, let's jump into the next one. For Fallout 2 is basically the same as before, put 2x scaling, keep it like this, then in the three dots, scroll down, disable frame limit, so you avoid the laggy thing. Obviously we are getting... Here it says 500 FPS, but again, that's like on the previous game, basically just a bug. Alright, so once into the game, you'll see that we have black bars at the sides, not sure why, but in my opinion, doesn't affect the game that much. We still have easily over 5 hours of battery. If you lock the frame rate to 90, it'll feel laggy when moving the mouse but you should have a better battery life. So yeah, nothing to say about this one, use the trackpads to play the game, because it's a mouse-based game, you don't want to use the sticks, like on the Rogue Ally, because it feels horrible to play. This is a trackpad game. So let's jump into the next one. For Fallout Tactics, I'm not sure why there's no scaling options, so my advice is to select 960 by 600, so it's not a very small thing when it comes to the UI. It looks okay, it's still pretty small, but that's fine. So we hit done. And again, as before, to not have laggy movement, my advice is to disable the frame limit. Although in this case it doesn't work. Hmm, interesting. It actually works. You get how much battery life. Yeah, easily 5 hours of battery. It's using one core at 100% for some reason. But as you can probably notice, it's okay. It's just laggy when it's moving. And make sure you select, when you select the resolution, that is 16 bit. If you put it at 32, it breaks the uh, visuals for some reason. There's a lot of artifacts. So yeah. Let's jump into the next one. Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition. So once you launch the game, you'll have something like this. And Valve added a new feature. Now you can use your controller inside the launcher. So the settings that you should use are this, in my opinion. On the advanced graphics, basically like this. And I lowered some of these things because it helped with stability quite a bit, <laughs> believe it or not lowering the fade of the objects. So hit OK, hit play, and let's wait for it to launch. Welcome to Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition. As you can see, when we are launching the game, we actually get 90 FPS. So the game seems to be ignoring the 60 FPS gap. So there might be some issues. I think issues st start past 100 FPS. 
But overall the game runs just fine. The only issue that I really run into is when there is transparency is very close to the camera. That means explosions and smoke uh, when that happens. Also if you saw that spike in the frame time that's because we're loading a different area. So that's sometimes what happens. With 90 hertz, I mean the game feels pretty damn smooth. It's pretty impressive in my opinion. You get uh, three and a half hours of battery, something like that. It can be even better. It really depends on what's going on. If you're in the open world like me right now, which you're going to be most of the time, it's going to be like this with some stutters like that. But I didn't have to add any mods or anything like that to work right away. And sometimes there are sections that have drops into the 70s for some reason. No explain no explanation. Sometimes it just happens, like here. Oh, let's shoot him. And as you can see there is when it drops. It increases the GPU usage quite significantly and man. My character cannot really shoot. There we go. So it can drop depending on what's going on. In this area in particular is when I drop sometimes. That increases the GPU usage quite significantly. So my advice for this one for both battery life and stability is to go into the three dots. And finally enough, lock it to 60 Hertz. Which I think for a game like this that you don't really are super accurate It's okay, in my opinion, of course. It looks good enough. You get more battery life. I would say probably over four hours on a full charge. If you're in the open world, it can lower it a bit, but you're going to be inside uh, close areas, outside. It's basically a mix. And this will give you good enough fluidity, in my opinion. Plus... Um, Good battery life, which it was already good at 3 something hours, but this should give you way more time using bats. <laughs> and he's done for. But a lot of battery life indoors, as you can see, and by indoors I mean cities like Megaton and close off places instead of the open world. It says 5 hours of battery, I would say 4.5 or more, especially locked to 6 oh FPS. Because again, at 90 FPS, well this looks smooth, you don't have a lot of accuracy in this game. But the option is there if you want to, there are some drops here and there, but nothing unplayable, at least in my opinion. So let's jump into the next one. So for Fallout New Vegas, for some reason we don't have a control in the launcher with the D-pad. So I'm going to use my fingers, something like this. In advanced, something like this, something like this, like this. A little bit lower on this, you'll see why in a moment. And on the distant LUDs, something like this. So hit OK, hit OK and hit play. Alright, Fallout New Vegas, as you can see, 90 Hz, we're pretty good there. On a full charge, probably 3.5 to 4 hours of battery at 90 Hz. I would recommend, like on Fallout 3, well, that stutter there is Traversal Stutter. Uh, as I was saying, I wouldn't recommend 90 just because it drops sometimes when there is especially transparencies on screen. No, I cannot shoot dynamite. Okay, that's fine. Let's shoot them in the head. Okay, I'll shoot them right away. There we go. You gained karma. And I'm pretty sure there was an explosive over here. Let me see if I can find it. I think... Yeah, right there. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't allow me to bat over it, but there it is. I 
and he's dead. So as you can see, it's not a hundred percent at 90 hertz, which is fine. I mean, this game was not designed with a higher frame rate in mind. But as you can see, it's completely fine. Yeah, there was the explosive. Let's grab the dynamite. So again, when there is an explosion, as you could see there, with the smoke closer to the screen, you'll drop below 90. Not a huge deal. But it's something that happens sometimes. So to maximize battery life and have the game consistently hitting a frame rate, excepting when there is traversal, traversal stutter. I recommend you play it at 60 Hz. It feels completely fine. It should be 100% bug free, quote unquote, as bug free as Bethesda engine games can be. You get on a full charge probably more than four hours of battery at 60 Hz. The game still controls completely fine. It's wonderful. But you get those traversal stutters when moving around uh, in the open world. So yeah, it's completely fine. You get lots of battery life at 60 Hz and more stability in combat. And as I said before, I didn't install any mods on this one, so it should be very easy, just plug and play. So no big deal on that one. And it controls just fine. What I like the most is that with 60 Hz, it has so much battery life, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I love that. If you're interested in playing Fallout New Vegas, you can go both routes. The 90 Hz with some drops route of the 60 Hz with traversal stutters route. But these two atoms. So yeah, New Vegas is great on the OLED as well. Let's jump into the next one. Fallout 4, since I made my previous videos, is verified. And what what does Bethesda do for verification? Well, instead of having a launcher like before to change the settings, you just hit play and are thrown right into the game without any possibility of changing the graphics. There's an alternative to do so, but it has issues, so let's get into the menu and I'll tell you what to do. Okay, so once into the menu, go into mods, then here you want to press the X key to search. This will bring up the on-screen keyboard, so go back, go back, go back, go back, it'll put the on-screen keyboard again and go back. So why would you want to do this? Well, because if you don't do that, when you invoke the on-screen keyboard to put your name or something like that, and you close it, the game will crash. This avoids the game from crashing when putting the on-screen keyboard. Yeah, I know, stupid, but let's continue. With that out of the way, <laughs> let's, let, let me show you which mods I installed right from here. So the ones that I install are the unofficial Fallout 4 patch, Enhanced Blood Textures Basic, Cheat Terminal because I already finished the game, Weightless Junk and th See Through Scopes, but there's a lot of stuff made by the community that you can, from the game itself, install. So these are the ones that I have installed, nothing else, just basic stuff. Welcome to Fallout 4. So. If we keep it as default, like Bethesda doesn't give us a launcher and all that, the game will be at 60. So to save some battery, just put the frame limit to 60 Hz because the game doesn't go above that using the normal option, the stock settings. And the stock settings, when it comes to visuals, it appears to be um, medium shadow draw distance, then medium to high shadows, and that's basically it. That allows us to sometimes drop into the 40s in more demanding places, such as Boston. When you're around the city that there's a lot of geometry, it always drops frames. But I wouldn't say it's as bad as... bad enough <laughs> to lock the frame rate to maybe 50 or 45. 
maybe lock it to 45 if you want a consistent frame rate but since Bethesda removed quote unquote the options menu the only thing that we can tweak that I recommend tweaking right away is into the settings display and you have these sliders lower the actor fade to this item fade to 50 percent object fade to the fourth uh, part of the slider and grass fade to around 50 percent why am i doing this well the object fade is the draw distance of the objects as you can see these are medium shadow draw distance affects performance quite significantly believe it or not So if you increase that, you're going, especially in demanding areas, demanding geometry heavy areas like this, you drop below 40 sometimes. So this should give you the best stability while playing the game with everything on default. So again, with the verification of this game, Bethesda did the same as on Skyrim <laughs> and basically removed the launcher so we cannot change the settings. They added some default stuff. That for most users should be good. For me, I think it's not great just because it disables a lot of options. But if you want me to do a more in depth showing on what's going on and how to make it run with custom settings, I will do a separate video because on the OLED, Steam Deck is a little bit different. But as you can see in some areas like this, it likes to drop. It happens in all versions, unfortunately. It's not perfect. So if you want to avoid these hard drops, my advice would be to lock it to 45 to make it less noticeable, but most of the time you should be into the 60s. So this part, I do it like this on purpose. After showing you those drops, I'm here at the beginning of the game. And this part is one of the less demanding ones, but there's a lot of nice combat, so... I think that's pretty cool as a showing of what you can expect. So most of the time should be into the 60s, but in certain locations that are very geometry heavy, such as Boston, well, you're going to drop into the 40s, upper 40s at times. If you want to avoid that, again, lock it to 45. And you should have a solid 45 across the board. But this is using the Bethesda settings without the launcher. This is what all Steam decks will have now. Due to the verification, Bethesda said, okay, let's just remove the launcher. So the game is now verified, like we did with Skyrim. So the lazy way to do it, no specific optimizations for Steam Deck. The other thing was when we had the launcher that on the Steam Deck OLED it said that we had like 90 FPS but the frame times were all spiky. Well that was because the game due to detecting a 90 hertz screen was like okay let's use double buffered V-Sync I think it was. So Manga HUD got bugged with certain V-Sync solutions it does. And it said 90 hertz, but it wasn't real. It wasn't 90 FPS. It was 40 something. But Manga Hood interprets it at 90 hertz due to the VSync solution. With the game being verified, that no longer happens. That's a thing of the past, luckily enough. But as you can see, like this, for most people, it will be great. If you're like me and like to tweak your settings to your liking and be above 60 sometimes. I'll probably do a separate video, please let me know in the comments if you're interested in me doing more of a deep dive on how to configure it properly. But the main issue, at least for me, apart from not having a launcher, is that when you invoke the on-screen keyboard to put your name or something like that, for some reason you need to bring up a keyboard, the game will crash when you close it. I showed you the solution at the beginning, open the mods folder, the, the option, Search, that will invoke the on-screen keyboard automatically, go back until you get to the menu, and that's fixed. Otherwise, when you open the on-screen keyboard for any reason and close it, the game will crash. So, yeah, that's basically it for Fallout 4. And you should expect three and, a th three and something hours of battery, give or take. 
And the game looks pretty good. Despite the shadow draw distance not being amazing because of the default settings, it's pretty damn good. And remember to put it at 60 hertz because the game by default stays there. So having the screen at 90 hertz makes no sense and uses more battery. So yeah. And if you want a solid frame rate across the board, even on Boston, 45 FPS. It won't be as smooth, but you won't have those harsh drops. This is optional, of course, for purists that don't want any performance drops. This is how you do it. So let's jump into Fallout 76. Fallout 76, 800p, high textures, medium water, medium lighting, medium shadows. You can lower this to if you want to. Shadow lighting on, mid on low has very terrible draw distance, so I recommend you keep it like that. Actor fade, item fade, object and grass fade are basically on one, so one before the lowest. Let's put it at the lowest actually, on those. Because performance reasons, you'll see why in a moment. Remember to restart the game once you change other settings. So we are with unlock frame rates, first of all, like on the previous ones. Make sure to put it at 60 hertz first. The game won't get anywhere close, 90. And with frame rates like this, we'll drop into the 40s. So while it runs better than the LCD Steam Deck, obviously, this game is not perfect. In more uh, taxing sections, like looking this way, I dropped frames in the past on my other on my other systems, such as ROG Ally, the LCD Steam Deck, my PC. So the game loading assets just stutters quite a bit. Oh, maybe lower textures to medium. But it ain't perfect, it has a lot of stuttering. And that has been my experience with Fallout 76 across the board. So in this case, what would I recommend for the OLED Steam Deck, despite the settings that I chose? Well, put the frame limit to 40, not 45, 40. So 40 hertz, you get 40 FPS, you get drops when moving the camera quickly or loading certain locations of the game. But it will be more stable than on my previous videos because I lowered the settings. You can also put everything on low. The game will look significantly worse and run almost the same. I would say it'll still be pretty unstable. And if you see flickering on my screen, that's the camera. It's not <laughs> like that in real life. It looks correct. And this one runs bad in locations like this. And the first time you log in, it stutters quite significantly. So personally, I'm not a fan of Fallout 76 at all. So that's not a big loss for me. But if you wanted to play this on the go, well, on the OLED Steam Deck, it works okay-ish. Without the charger plugged in, you should have uh, two and a half hours plus battery life, give or take. Yeah, maybe, yeah, two and a half or more, two and a half to three hours. But again, it's going to drop quite significantly in certain locations and when traversing, which is the point of the game. So the Fallout franchise on the Steam Deck OLED, I think is great. I'm, well, I'm angry that Fallout 4 doesn't have option, an options menu in-game. After being verified, they just remove the, the launcher, which removes the options menu. The game runs pretty well. You can get 60s very well. If you want me again to do a full video on Fallout 4 on the OLED Steam Deck with unlock frame rates and tweaked options, please let me know. Then the first Fallout with the trackpad is fine. That's with the first three Fallout games. Then Fallout 3 and New Vegas run at 90 FPS pretty well. There are some drops in certain locations. Seems to be a game issue not a Steam Deck issue. 
but if you want the most battery life out of those two my advice is to keep it at 60 they stay at 60 pretty well there are some stutters when traversing but nothing unplayable on new vegas and three and you have a lot of battery life more than four hours so that's awesome on the oled the colors look great because there's a lot of dark locations in the fallout games and fallout 76 well it's not stable it drops quite a bit even at the lowest settings so i made like a, a mix of medium and low to have some visual fidelity with okay performance but i will lock it to 40 just to get some smoothness out of it instead of locking it to 30 because let's be honest nobody wants to play at 30 fps so yeah the fallout franchise is great i don't like 76 and the lack of options in fallout 4 bothers me but for most people it should be fine so yeah i think they are a good experience on the oled steam deck no mods required but i recommend some of them on fallout 4 and battery life is absolutely awesome so i'll highly recommend them except in 76 but that's more of a personal thing i'm not uh, interested in fallout 76 at all but it gives me on the performance side no reason to play it either way on the steam deck so Thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did revisiting the fallout franchise but this time on the oled steam deck i made this same video on the rogue ally and the lcd steam deck if you're interested so thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye guys